Trust me when I say that OLED televisions have a lot of hype. People compare them against just about everything in the market. And I will tell you at this point, people consider OLEDs as a standard for contrast, vivid colors, and balance of viewing angles. Well, on this video, I'm gonna show you guys everything you need to know about the LG C2. So what's the difference between an OLED television and a conventional TV? Well, OLEDs are self-lit pixels. So what that means is that whenever there's no signal on each little dot on the television, it's basically turned off. So that gives you the best contrast level possible where a traditional TV has backlights on it. So when everything goes to a black scene, you might see some bleed through of the light, but it depends on the television if it has local dimming or not. The C2 is available in multiple sizes. You can get it from a 42 inch all the way up to an 83 inch. And I'm using the 48 inch in the video today. But the interesting thing about the LG C2 is that depending on what size you get, it really determines which base is on the television. If you look at the 42 inch, it has the legs on both sides and then the 48 has the full base across the bottom. The 55, 65, and 77 has a small base on it and then it's large again on the 83 inch. I'm not sure why they chose different designs, but keep in mind if you buy one of these televisions, you wanna make sure you get the proper stand to sit it on. The C2 also has the new Alpha 9 Gen 5 AI 4K processor and it supports a new 7.1.2 virtual surround sound to enhance the audio if you're not using a soundbar. Now I will tell you guys that I don't have a C1 to compare it. So on this video, I can't really show you the differences, but that 20% should make a big improvement for people who are complaining about darkness when watching HDR. Now back to the screen, I did a few tests on the television, just like I do on all my other videos, and the uniformity was great, the contrast was great. But one thing I did notice is that it didn't seem like the panel was completely lined up. If you look at this illustration right here, if you look on one side of television, it doesn't seem like the same amount of dots are on the other side. And this leads me to believe that something's not right with the panel that I have because of the alignment. Maybe there is such a thing of a panel lottery. Now, another thing that really stood out to me is the motion test. It doesn't seem as smooth as you normally get on a Samsung TV. Even the lower end models look a lot clean on that top line, but let's not leave it right there. Let's test it real quick. So the test is out. This is the settings that the TV was on when I just showed you. If you go down here, I can turn on the OLED motion. And one thing I noticed, the TV did get darker. Turn it back off, so you got brighter again. So now let's take a look at the viewing angles. This is right here in front of the television. And if we go over here to the side, you can see the viewing angles. So even though I love everything about this TV so far, let's admit, we did find some flaws, right? Huh. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. Let's talk about burn-in because that's something very important that people think about. And I will tell you that I haven't had this TV long enough to see if it has any burn-in, but this is what LG says on their website. Now you can look this up online, but in a nutshell, it's basically saying that the TV can get burn-in, but they do have software built into the TV to give you a much longevity out of the television as far as burn-in. Now I don't want to get too far into burn-in, but just want to let you guys know it is a possibility. But here lately, LG basically understands that can happen on this type of technology. And they put so many protocols in place that not a lot of people are experiencing any kind of burn-in or anything, but there are people who are. But the LG Care basically allows you to put the TV in different settings. So it shifts the pixels around. It adds screen savers to the TV whenever you're not using it. And just different things like that to refresh the pixels all the time to make sure burn-in is not gonna be something that you have to deal with if you're just watching regular TV or you know just basic programming. Talk about the design of the TV. First of all, the edges around this TV looks beautiful. On the side of it, you can see there's a border that goes all the way around the TV. There's a logo on the base of the unit and there's a press button in the center so you can get to some of the basic menus. Now, when you get to the side view, it looks a little different because on top of it, you're gonna see a piece of glass and the base is gonna hold all your components as well. Personally, I wish they would have inserted some type of handle into the back of the plastic on the back of this TV because it's a little bit harder and a little bit awkward to move the TV around. On the back panel, you're gonna find some screw holes so you can mount this TV on the wall and it has a non-removable power cord. 
Now it does have some wire maintenance by pulling off this little plastic piece on the back of it. And there's another plastic piece to hide the screws whenever you put the TV together. Now, whenever you look at the different connections on the C2, it has plenty of inputs, especially for people who are gaming. On the side of the TV, you're gonna find three HDMI 2.1 ports that all can run up to 120 Hertz, plus there's one USB 2.0. On the back of it, you're gonna find additional HDMI 2.0, plus two additional USBs, so it's a total of three USB and four HDMI. There's an hour blaster output, a TV tuner, as well as a headphone jack, a service port, and a fiber optic output. The only thing about these connections is that the HDMI is fine because you know gaming is something they want to push, but they could at least put one USB 3.0s and they could have used the new ATSC 3.0 tuner for the next gen 4K over the air content. So that was a little bit of letdown for me, to be honest. And the gaming is going to be great on this television. I checked out the 440, the 1080p, 720p, and everything was capable of doing up to 120 hertz refresh rate. Now, if you go over here to the TV details, you can see over here it supports every feature that the Xbox have to offer. And under the video modes, you can see that it will support auto low latency, variable refresh rate, HDR10, auto HDR, Dolby Vision, and Dolby Vision Gaming. Now I only have a 60 hertz tester, but it was picking up 13 milliseconds in gaming mode. And I went through all the different settings. Again, it was getting between 13 and 13.1 milliseconds. Now, if you have a 120 hertz tester, it may make a difference. And this is what the colors look like when I switch from the different modes. So this is standard mode. This is frames per second. Here we have RGP, RTS, sports, and standard. So you can see the colors do change a little bit on the TV. You can see the black levels are changing as well. Now when it comes to the game experience, I'm going to tell you guys this TV and the Samsung QN90B that I've had on this channel so far are probably the two best gaming experiences I ever have and I'm not a big gamer but the biggest thing I can tell on this TV is that contrast, it, it doesn't even look real, it's just so lifelike, it's just amazing on this OLED and I can't wait to do a side by side between the QN90B so I can see you know how the experience is between both of these TVs but if you're a gamer you're definitely gonna love this TV in addition to that this TV will support the Nvidia GeForce Now so it's a cloud-based service and it will support Google Stadia so if you bought a TV like this and you don't want to run out and buy yourself an Xbox or um, a PS5 you can pay for a service you can hook up a separate controller to this TV and now you can do gaming right here directly without having a console, which is pretty cool. Now, one other thing I did with this TV is that I did set it up with a PC, and I'm gonna tell you that it look really good on that one as well. And I tried my first computer, which is an older uh, Dell computer with a GeForce, uh, I think it's a GX745, uh, so it's an old computer, and I was only able to get 30 frames per second, but then I took the TV, hooked it up to the LG Gram, and Voila, I was able to get 4K at 120 frames per second. So your video card is gonna make the difference in the performance of this television. So if you have a newer computer, you're good to go. If you have an old one, you might only get 30 frames per second and it's not the cables. If you watched my unboxing video, I made a typo. This is WebOS 22, not WebOS 6. But here's a few things that changed about it. First of all, over here, it has a feature called Room to Room Share. So if you have multiple compatible LG TVs, you can actually share the picture from one screen over to the next. Some other things about this operating system, just like last year model, you can use Google or Alexa just by downloading an application and logging into your account. Another feature I wanna show you, if you go down here to multi-view and plus on this, you can have your smartphone on one side of it and you can launch an application on the other side. So this is a newer generation, what they call picture and picture. Another feature you can do on this TV is called Remote PC. So you can send your PC screen over to it, but that is a feature of Windows 10. And it does have Apple HomeKit, so you can screen mirror your iPhone or Apple computer anyway. 
Now LG does have what they call home dashboard. And if you pull this up, you can see all the different devices connected to it. You can see the Apple AirPlay right there. And you can see any devices connected to it. In fact, I don't have a mobile device connected, but you can download the LG Smart application and do it. Now over here, you can see where it says Home Internet of Things. It found four devices. The TV can control some of those basic features even without logging into your Alexa or Google. Now, if you're the type of person like everything automatic, you can use what they call AI Picture Pro, brightness, genre. So what the TV will do is automatically select everything. Plus, you can tune your Magic Remote Control to your room so it calibrates the sound. And then it'll let you hear a before and after. Another feature I like about most LG TVs is that you can play your optical, wired speakers wirelessly and internal speakers at the same time. So you can see all these different options here. And if you use the LG application, you can even use your smartphone as a external speaker. So you can have headphones hooked up to that. Remote control that comes with the C2 on the top of it. You have your voice command buttons as well as a number pad. And then you have your volume up and down and channel up and down that you can use with the LG channels. You have your home button as well as a voice command and your input selector. Over here you have a navigation and it does have a roller in the center. You hear it click right there. And at the bottom it has some hotkeys like Netflix, Disney, as well as Amazon Prime and LG channels. And you can see there's some voice commands where you can change the different ones at the bottom. Now I know a lot of you guys want me to start picking apart every TV that I do like some other YouTubers out there, but that's not my style. I just want you guys to know, I'm just showing you the facts of things that I think is very important to you and your experience of looking at new televisions or new technology products. Now, I will tell you that there's a lot more videos I can make on this LG C2. And if you do want me to make those videos, leave a comment below and tell me what type of things that you'd like to see. Also, I will let you guys know that I'm working on a lot of cool things. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel and you like different type of technology videos, especially TVs, make sure you go and smash that like button and subscribe to the channel because just to let you guys know, I have a few more things coming down and I'm very excited to show you guys my new uh, products that I'm bringing in. Also, if you guys want any type of merch, you can go to shop.techstevehd.com and uh, pick up a shirt like this if you want to support the channel so I can bring even better products in because I pay for a lot of the stuff I bring on this channel. But if not, you're not obligated to it. I'm Tech Steve. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next one.